Hello guys, Ryan Ho, back with another video. Today I have a $3,000 headphone. This is the Abyss Diana MR. I've had this for over eight months now, so I figured I'd give an update about my thoughts on this headphone. Now, $3,000 is a lot for a headphone, but when you're kind of really down the audio file rabbit hole, you're looking for the best of the best. And I've tried a lot of headphones, very expensive ones, from ranging from like, you know, $6,000 to, you know, three, four, even cheaper than that as well. And, you know, price is just a number that, you know, the people kind of price it at, you know, it doesn't indicate if it's good or not. For me, I actually tested all the headphones to see if they actually sounded good. And a common theme I found was that a lot of expensive headphones don't have the right tuning, at least not for me. I'm looking for a tuning that's very, very kind of natural, very neutral with a kind of a little bit of bass boost would be nice. And that's the type of sound I'm looking for. And I really didn't find much of that until I found the Abyss Diana MR. And this really, really did kind of captivate me, honestly. And the other thing was, you know, having detail. There's a lot of good headphones that have, you know, good tuning. They could be using electronics to EQ it or whatever, but then it's obviously having both detail and good tuning, right? And in combination of both, the Abyss IMR really was the only thing I could find that really satisfied all my requirements. And I'm kind of a very strict person, like I'll take notes and I'll really like, literally like take Excel sheet notes of everything I've tested at audio shows and stuff like that. So I was really looking for a very, very long time until I found this headphone. So after owning this headphone for a while, like I said, it has a pretty much a very neutral type of tuning that's very kind of studio-like in its default format. So if you're using the kind of default leather pads, you're really getting that default studio sound, but with like hyper detail that you will never hear in other headphones. So that's pretty much its kind of party trick, I guess I would say, but the bass itself is pretty flat and then the mid range is pushed very forward. And then you have a nice kind of treble that's very detailed without being overly sharp. So that's the thing about a lot of headphones is I feel like a lot of these high-end headphones, people say they're really detailed, but they're just very piercingly bright and sharp and they're actually kind of painful to your ears. And people think that's like detail because they're hearing things they never heard before, but really that's not detail. Detail is basically being able to play the sound without really you know distorting or anything like that versus you know having piercing trouble with a lot of headphones is just not detail right now that I described the kind of default tuning this i've actually been playing around with a lot of different ear pads that this kind of headphone comes with so this thing has a pretty unique i guess kind of trick so the abyss imr is a planar medic driver so they use kind of magnets to kind of keep the driver in place and to kind of play the music and keep it in kind of shape while the magnets are actually used to attach the ear pads, which is not very common in a lot of headphones. And so it's very kind of a cool and ingenious design to kind of use the magnets. And so it's really cool how, and how it kind of works and you can kind of see how thin it is, right? But, you know, a lot of headphones kind of use, you know, plastic or they use like glue on, but these are really just magnets. So you can really take on and off ear pads as much as you want without really wearing down the system. And that's the cool thing about this headphone is it's very like long lasting and built to be that way. And the other thing is this is actually using magnets for the extension as well to keep it in place, which is also a really cool design. So there's less like physical parts that are kind of wearing down as much. So just kind of contributes to the long lasting nature of this. But the reason why I talk about this is because I have obviously a lot of ear pads on the table. As you can see, we have the kind of stock pads. Well, these aren't the stock one. I guess these are the base ported leather pads. They basically have the kind of base ports in the back, which essentially they create like what they call an air gap on the headphone. But essentially what that means is you get a bass boost while keeping most of the frequency the same. So you get that nice neutral tuning with more kind of mid bass and a little bit less sub bass. These are my favorite ear pads. That's why they're on the headphone right now. It's the one that I like the most and the one I use the most is definitely the bass ported after eight months, I said the same thing like eight months ago as well, that bass port is my favorite. I would still say they are still my favorite. Now they have the stock pads, which in my opinion, they are just, you know, they have better sub bass or more neutral. So if you want like the most accurate type of tuning, the stock pads are definitely the ones to go for. They really are just laser sharp and, you know, tune really well, but they don't have as much of that like lifted bass that, you know, you want for your EDM music type of stuff like that. Cause I listen to a lot of modern genres. So definitely, you know, a different option. Now, 
we have the suede right here. Now, suede are an interesting kind of sound. They kind of change the sound of the headphone again. Now, the suede basically make this into, you know, lack of a better word, a Sennheiser HD 6XX. But what that really means is, you know, it has a very kind of warm sound. So you get, you know, less trouble kind of emphasis. It's a little bit more kind of muted. So it makes it a little bit more kind of a smooth and like soothing headphone to listen to. And the sub bass kind of, you know, leaks a little bit. So there's less sub bass presence than the stock pads. So, and it is a little bit more kind of mid bass and like kind of more warmth to it. So really the lack of better words is it sounds like HD6XX is a very nice, smooth and warm sound to kind of chill to. So if you're looking for that, these suede are definitely a cool ear pad that kind of changes the sound for people who kind of like that type of sound. And the other thing is they're actually very comfortable too with the suede. I think they are probably the most comfortable kind of ear pad as well. So that's really nice to see. And then of course, right here, we actually have some ear pads from the Kony. So these are the Kony, um, basically the fan shaded ear pads. And these ones are very similar to the stock pads and sound. So you have a pretty neutral type of sound, but the difference in my opinion for these ear pads is obviously the fit. As you can see, they're kind of the older style of the Abyss and they kind of you know push more into your ears, I guess, and a little bit smaller ear pads. And the other thing about them is that the sound, they're a little different in sound. The main difference to me is definitely the treble. So I would say with these pads, it kind of emphasizes like the kind of, I guess the lower ranges of female vocals. So, you know, what people call makes them sound shouty, I guess. I would say like the 4K and the upper mid range gets kind of emphasized more. And then the higher treble, around like 8K and stuff like that and beyond is kind of a little less on this ear pad. So they definitely kind of change where the treble is emphasized, but really they sound very similar to stock. So if you guys are looking for that, Dakoni makes some of these ear pads. So really, you know, eight months later, where does this leave us, right? So eight months later, this is still probably the most detailed headphone I've ever heard. I, you know, put it in my kind of my old, I guess old, but like it's was my main headphone. This is the Hyphen HE6 SEV2. And this was honestly a really, really detailed headphone. And, you know, I had no kind of qualms about the detail, but the thing was the tuning, right? I keep talking about the tuning, but I feel like that's the most important thing was that a lot of times I would listen to music with this and it had a big hole in the mid range. So a lot of like, female vocalists or male vocalists you just sound overly far away, overly distant away. And like over time, even though it's really detailed, it just like, I just wanted to be closer to the music. And the Abyss Dyna MR definitely fixes that aspect a lot where the mid range is pushed very forward. You can definitely hear it. It sounds like you know, the singer is standing like right in front of you, which is kind of what I was looking for versus something like this. And really like, this headphone kind of spoils me. I have a lot of like cheaper headphones that I review obviously and I own, but they just really don't have the same amount of like detail or resolution. It really out resolves everything that I have by a significant margin, except for maybe this headphone, but it still out resolves this headphone as well. And when I'm listening to just like, you know, your average everyday like AirPods Pro when I'm walking around, I really do miss the detail on this. It really is something special. You know, it really brings you the closest to real life. People call it transparent, but essentially that's really how I feel about it. That's kind of the type of stuff I'm into. I really into things that sound the closest to real life. Not some people like a lot of different flavors, a lot of different type of sounds, but I'm very boring. I just want things to sound like I'm there at a concert essentially, right? So I feel like the Abyss Diana MR really, really achieves that for me. And it's something I definitely recommend if you guys are interested. Obviously, it is a very ex expensive headphone. And then also, you know, since I've got this headphone, I do have different DAC amps too. So I have the, I'm using the SMSL SUX, which is probably my favorite DAC right now combined with the iFi Pro iCan. So that into this really gives you a very, very, very ultimately transparent type of sound with the lack of better words, right? So anyways, I hope this video is helpful. Please like and subscribe down below. I'll my videos out and I'll see you guys in my next video.